Inside Football with Bud Wilkinson, head coach of the University of Oklahoma's football team. Fifteen minutes of fast-moving, exciting highlights of football. The people, its plays, and its problems. Brought to you by your National Guard, a strong force of citizen soldiers and airmen. On the ground and in the air, they serve with pride on America's first line of defense. And now, here's Bud Wilkinson. Hello, everyone. It's good to be with you. You know one of the fine football teams in the country represents Michigan State University. Let's go to the campus of the Spartans. It's one of the most beautiful in the country. Michigan State is also a great defensive football team, as these pictures show. Michigan State in defense in dark shirts. The passer fades to throw, but is hit for a 12-yard loss. Second down, 22. The ball carrier swings wide. He turns the corner, but is stopped by a beautiful tackle at the line of scrimmage. Third down, 22. The attack is off tackle, but again, a hard-charging lineman makes the play for a two-yard loss. One of the best ways of judging a football team is how rapidly they can switch from defense to offense when a ball is kicked. Michigan State does it as well as it possibly can be done, with excellent blocking downfield on the punt return. The man responsible for this fine play is Coach Duffy Doherty, the excellent mentor of the Spartans. Duffy, what does it take to play defense? Well, defense, to my way of thinking, epitomizes the morale and the spirit of a football team more than of any other department of the game. You show me a team where everyone on defense has that tremendous second effort, where everyone is hustling and trying to get a uh, as we say, a piece of that ball, or everybody's trying to get in on the tackle, and I'll show you a team that has great morale and great spirit. Naturally, on defense, you like to have linemen, if possible, who have great physical ability, boys who are strong and are agile and quick. You like to have defensive backs who have the quickness necessary to, to knock down passes and to come up in the secondary and tackle. But most of all, you want fearless, courageous boys who, in football, coaches parlance, are hard-nosed and tough. But is the difference between offense and defense so close that the intangibles really make the difference? Yes, they really do. Uh, that's the case, though, in every game. It's the element of desire, which is an intangible thing, that makes the balance between offense and defense. Because every good game has a very close and a very delicate balance. Uh, you see, in football, the rules give you four downs to make ten yards, which means if you can average two and a half yards per try, you will make the first down. But if the defense can hold you to two and a quarter yards per try, just one quarter of a yard difference, about that much, I guess, then you aren't going to make the first down and you're going to have to kick the ball. It's that very, very delicate balance. Baseball has the same thing. The distance from home plate to first base is 90 feet. And when you go to a ball game, almost every play at first is close. The runner is either safe by a step or he's out by a step. Let's take a timeout for football. Time in for the National Guard. Did you know the National Guard is over 300 years old? That's right. The first National Guard units were established in 1636. They were the Minutemen, sworn to protect home, family, and community. Today, there's a National Guard unit in every major community of the United States. In or near your own hometown, the National Guard is ready to protect you. In the air, Air National Guardsmen form a ready force in the vital defense system guarding America's skies. On the ground, well-trained Army National Guardsmen are on guard every day of the year. These are the Minutemen of today, your friends and neighbors. You should be proud of them. Remember, it pays to keep your guard up. Well, Bud, from the stands, it looks like the offense has the advantage. Well, the offense does have some advantage, but football, like all good games, has that very delicate balance. The advantage that the offense has over the defense is threefold. First, the offense knows where the play is going, and secondly, when the ball will be snapped. This gives them a little jump on their opponent every time. The defense must react to the movement of the offense. And so from this card, it sort of seems that all of the advantage is with the offense. But the rules makers in football have leveled that off 
by keeping the offensive blockers from having the full use of their hands and arms. When you're an offensive football player, your arm is really cut off at the elbow. The rules say that you can only use the surface out to the elbow, and you must keep your hand in contact with your chest. That doesn't sound like too much, but uh, I think if you use this little football player here as an example, same defense, full use of the hands and arms. When he goes to offense, they come off at the elbow. He now is a very limited football player, hand and arm wise. And the comparison between the two, I think gets readily apparent. The thing that you have to realize is that football is a game of balance. You have to stay on your feet. You have to move well. And without your arms to balance you, you're very likely to fall down. I think that most of you have walked a railroad track at some time in your life. With your arms out, you keep your balance quite well. But when you try to walk that rail with your arms at your sides, it's very, very difficult to stay on it. Well, but hands or no hands, it looks from the stands like the lions face each other, charge out, and shove. <laughs> well, it may look that way, Howard, but the defensive men are using their hands and arms to keep their opponents away from them so they retain their freedom of movement. Coach Duffy Doherty will demonstrate the two basic defensive charges for us. First is the hand shiver. The hands are driven up underneath the opponent's shoulders, driving him back and away from the body. Next, the forearm shiver. Here the forearm is used up underneath the chest of the opponent to raise him up and drive him back. Well, Bud, does a defensive lineman confine his attention to the man in front of him as Duffy did? Well, at the start of every play, you confine your attention to the man in front of you, but there's a great deal more to being a defensive lineman. Every time the ball is snapped, the defensive lineman must move with it. Then he must protect his own territory. That means take care of the area that is assigned to you on the defense. Third, having done that, move to the ball, and then fourth, make the tackle. Now, every defensive lineman on every play should do one, two, and three. But you can't do four all of the time because your teammates might make the tackle before you get there. Let's watch Michigan State in practice. We'll confine our attention to the defensive guard who is playing over the center, indicated by the arrow. Remember, this defensive lineman has four things to do on every defensive play. He must... First, charge with the snap of the ball, then protect his territory, then move with the ball, and finally make the tackle. As the play develops, he does the first three things beautifully. But as the arrow on the right indicates, his teammate, the end, makes the tackle before he can get there. The guard is indicated by the arrow at the left. He is moving with the ball, and he is in position to execute the fourth mission of a defensive lineman, that of making the tackle. However, his teammate was there ahead of him. This play is run in slow motion so that you can follow the action a little better. Let's watch it again. The offensive team is lined up ready to go. The defensive guard is in position in front of the center. Every defensive lineman must be alert for the snap of the ball. That's the starting gun. When the ball moves, the defense can move. As the center moves with the ball and the defense charges, they have an opportunity to get to their opponents, force them away, and get in the pattern of pursuit. As the play starts, the defensive lineman that we are watching, the man over the center, has moved with the snap of the ball into the center, protected his territory, and now that he sees the play is going wide, he is moving with the ball toward the flank, getting ready to make the tackle. He continues his pursuit, drives in, and meets the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. By moving with the ball, instead of getting behind the ball, by following the proper angle of pursuit, the guard was able to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. His teammate is there to help him, should he have missed. But I always thought the idea was for the defensive lineman to charge hard and get in the opponent's backfield. Well, they're supposed to charge hard, but they only should control the opponent, and then they should pursue the ball carrier. If they penetrate, they might get behind the ball carrier. I think I can explain this a little better if I use these little football players. This is the center, and this is the halfback. The defensive guard is the man that we're talking about. If he charges too hard and penetrates into the backfield, the halfback who is running around the end will get ahead of him. It will simply be a foot race, and the guard will probably never catch the halfback. If, on the other hand, and instead of penetrating into the backfield, as the ball is snapped, 
the guard hits the opponent in front of him, protects his territory, and then slides to the ball carrier on the proper angle of pursuit. He will meet him at the line of scrimmage, and there won't be any gain made on the play. Let's watch Michigan State demonstrate this. The defensive lineman charges through and gets behind the ball carrier, again in slow motion. If the lineman penetrates, he will get behind the ball carrier as he swings around the end. Coach Duffy Doherty is standing as the end in this picture. By using the proper angle of pursuit, the guard can make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Let's watch it again in slow motion as the ball carrier swings around Coach Doherty. Protect your territory, move with the ball, make the tackle. We'll have another interesting point about watching a football game right after this word about the National Guard. Awareness. Mobility. Speed. These are key words in football. In order to achieve this in our national defense, America must be on its toes. If you're between the ages of 17 and 25 and have a military obligation, you can fill it by joining your Army National Guard. You will receive valuable technical training while you build a proud career as a citizen soldier. If you are a veteran with a remaining service obligation, complete that obligation while serving with your Army National Guard in your own hometown unit. Remember, as a young man of 17 or over, or a veteran, there's a place for you in America's largest, readiest reserve force. Stop by your local National Guard Armory today and get the complete details. It pays in many ways to join the Army National Guard. Well, but is there a way for a fan to tell how well the defense is playing? Yes, there really is, and it's a very simple thing. When the tackle is made, count the number of defensive football players that are within five yards of the ball carrier. If there's seven or eight of them, that team is hustling on defense and playing well. Let's watch this game shot. Single wing, the ball carrier runs wide. The tackle is made almost on the line of scrimmage. And now, even though it was a wide end run, let's count the number of defensive players within five yards of the ball carrier when he was tackled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten members of the defensive team have moved rapidly and well enough with the ball to be within five yards of the ball carrier when he was tackled. This concerted team effort is the mark of good defense. Let's watch another defensive play. The ball carrier drives off tackle and is met after gaining a yard. Count the number of defensive men in the rectangle. You will note that almost every member of the defensive team is on this small area of the field. When every man on defense is determined to make the tackle, and when they execute the fundamentals properly, the defense always holds up. As you have seen, successful defense can only be played by men who are willing to make a great second, third, and fourth effort. I think many of us are a little too easily discouraged when the first thing goes wrong. If we could live our lives making a big second, third, and fourth effort all of the time, we'd probably be a great deal more successful. It's been a great pleasure to be with you. Inside Football features Bud Wilkinson and Howard Newman. Executive producer, Ned Hockman. Produced at Southwest Film Center. Inside Football is brought to you as a public service in support of your National Guard. A strong force of citizen soldiers and airmen. On the ground and in the air, they serve with pride on America's first line of defense. And now, here's Bud Wilson. Hello everyone, it's good to be with you. You know one of the fine football teams in the country represents Michigan State University. Let's go to the campus of the Spartans. Inside Football with Bud Wilkinson, head coach of the University of Oklahoma's football team. 15 minutes of fast moving, exciting highlights of football. The people, its plays, and its problems. Brought to you by your National Guard. It is stopped by a beautiful tackle at the line of scrimmage. Third down, 22. The attack is off tackle, but again, a hard-charging lineman 
makes the play for a two-yard loss. One of the best ways of judging a football team is how rapidly they can switch from defense to offense when a ball is kicked. Michigan State, it's one of the most beautiful in the country. Michigan State is also a great defensive football team, as these pictures show. Michigan State in defense in dark shirts. The passer fades to throw, but is hit for a 12-yard loss. Second down, 22. The ball carrier swings wide. He turns the corner, does it as well as it possibly can be done, with excellent blocking downfield on the punt return. The man responsible for this fine play is Coach Duffy Doherty, the excellent mentor of the Spartans. Duffy, what does it take to play defense? Well, defense, to my way of thinking, 